it's a rainy day here, as you can probably hear, and it's cool out. And it's a good day for us to install our Midland radios. I know you guys have seen the, the videos where we've been loading hay and you have one person driving a truck with a hay trailer and then you got somebody else that's loading them. And sometimes you're not in the right position and it's awkward, you can't move around. It, it kind of sucks. Well, we didn't have an incident, but we were close to having an incident that would have cost us a lot of money simply because the drivers of the truck and the tractor just simply couldn't communicate and it would have cost us a lot to repair the issue that we would have had from it. We came up with a solution with Midland said, hey, we need a way to be able to communicate on our farm between equipment and the problem is, is it's not only just short distance, so not just when we're in the field loading hay, but also whenever we are trying to move cattle, move sheep, when we're at different farms and we're trying to communicate with each other because let's say I'm over here cutting hay and I need Chrissy to bring stuff to me. Sometimes where I cut hay at, you know, on places that I'm responsible for, I don't have signal. A lot of places that Jason owns, I don't have signal and neither does Jason, so we can't really communicate well. That is where all of this comes in. The 50 watt MXT 500 radios should be what we need and should give us the ability to reach across from farm to farm, even in our hilly, very forest dense terrain that we deal with. We're gonna put one of each of the MXT 500s. So one will go in my tractor, one's gonna go into Jason's tractor. And we're gonna put one in my truck, one in Jason's truck, and one in his dad's truck. And then these are going to be for the side-by-sides or just for a random vehicle that shows up because there are times that we have friends that help us and they're using their own tractor or their own truck or whatever. This makes it to where we can communicate with them and not have to, you know, remove a radio and switch it over generally people that are just helping us out aren't usually you know going to be separated from us for long distances this right here is exactly what is in this package so you get your two handheld two-way radios and their model is uh, T71 Alpha, or Tango 71 Alpha. You get a charging station for it, obviously the charger itself, the rechargeable battery pack that goes in them, belt clip, and then this is the battery cover that goes on the back of the radio. I see. So it was all packaged very well, but that does make it difficult to get out. And I just wanna show you the actual products, not so much you know, how much time and effort and money they've put into packaging these items. So everything's in there together and that's it. This protective little screen cover comes off. There we go. And turn it on. All right. Kind of another cool feature is these battery packs. I could either use these rechargeable battery packs or if I'm in a bind, let's you know, say something happens, this battery pack quits, I can throw double A batteries in here. So it gives you uh, some options as far as what will work well in you know say a, a bad predicament i guess i saved you the unboxing i literally opened everything right there this is not exactly how it comes in here but pretty close so you'll have your radio you got your mic power cord some mounting screws the magnet for the antenna it also comes with a magnet plate. I didn't open that because I don't need that. My tractor is actually metal. Uh, mounting bracket, antenna, and mic holder. Now, when I talked to Midland, I said, hey, you know, I've, the area we're in is rough terrain as far as signal. What could I do to get better signal? And they actually sent me another magnet, or sorry, another antenna that will still mount on the same factory magnet. I've got it down there in the box. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Freedom Farms, fighting for the USA. Shameless plug, I know. But not only is it exciting that they made that song, 
Randy, well, Jim is the one that actually runs the Field Rose YouTube channel. Wrote that, they all wrote that song themselves and sang it and did phenomenal. Go check it out. They deserve at least a view from you guys for it. It's pretty cool. If you're interested in our shirts, our shirts are all made in the United States, 100% made here. So the shirt's made here, then the logos and everything are printed in Nebraska. We don't want any of our logos on anything other than American-made clothing and hats, which is another exciting point. We have hats that are coming out soon, not ball caps, but they're actually going to be um, like stocking caps for winter. Still working on finding somebody for our sweatshirts and hoodies. Um, been going through a few different places, hoping to bring that to you soon as well. I know, I don't plug merch often, but that song is really catchy and I just figured I'd go ahead and plug it. Everything's mounted up. I've got to tidy up some wires yet because I'm not going to leave them free hanging, you know, going down there and everything outside. Um, I do need to do some clearance checks first because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to fit through this door with my antenna on the top. So I need to check that first. Did all that just to show that while I don't have anybody to talk to, it does work. But what I thought was cooler, on the top of the mic, on the at least on the MXT 500, if you look, I can change channels from the mic. I thought that was pretty neat. Um, pretty useful because if I'm talking, you know, let's say that we switch channels or two different farms, different channels, I need to switch back and forth. Pretty easy to do and I don't have to reach up here and try to do it by hand while bouncing around in the in the field and everything. I can do it right here even while bouncing around. That doesn't really affect me because I have the mic in my hand. Awesome design. I did mount the mic holder back here. Oops. Helps if you actually put it in there. All my stuff's back here because I do have people that ride over here and this already takes a lot of space. Or not really, it takes some head space away already. A lot of mounting options. Uh, I only used one screw. I don't know how well you can see up there, but mounted it at an angle so I could get everything fit in there. And it's back in the corner like I wanted. Um, weather channel is here. The, uh, just pretty phenomenal. I'm really excited about it. Like we mentioned, it is raining. I'm going to go ahead and put the one in the truck real quick and we will go from there. If it's still stormy and really crappy weather, we will do a range test another day, but we will do a range test. I forgot to mention a couple of things. So you can look up all the specs on their website, but what I found interesting was this part right here. I don't know how well you're going to read that, but the top one is saying that the max distance with no obstructions essentially is 75 miles. So no side obstructions, basically flat open ground should reach 75 miles. Partial obstruction of, to line of sight is 20 to 25 miles, so some hills, trees. I'd classify what we're in right here. And then you've got obstructed, so major obstruction in the line of sight, so like a city. You know, there's a lot of interference with all kinds of different things. you got buildings and everything else. We're gonna test that to see if we really do reach that 20 to 25 mile range. The other thing that I wanna see is, I'm gonna go see if we have a cable, but this has a USB-C port on it. I'm assuming to be able to charge your phone, which would be more convenient to have my phone charger back here than it is up there and then swing it around. That's also the same USB-C, this is what I use to charge my phone, but also what I use to charge cameras and everything else. So, pretty handy feature in my opinion. Let's go install the one in the truck. I want to go over the antennas real quick. Uh, when we do the test, we will start out with the factory antenna, the one that comes with the radio. And then once we lose signal, what we'll do is we'll switch the base station. So the tractor will switch it over to this antenna, the 3dB gain antenna. And we will see how much farther that gains us with basically, you know, my wife being here with the tractor, having that on there, see if that makes a difference. If it doesn't, then I'll switch it on my end and put this one on in the truck and see if that makes a difference. And then if that doesn't, we'll put them on both. We'll, we'll make it to where it's a, a better comparison because let's say the tractor is the one that's always gonna be far away and 
this makes a big difference for the tractor to be able to send and receive, but it makes no difference for the base station, then there's no point in spending the extra money at that point. Uh, mounting brackets that give you some options here. So this would go on a, on a roll bar or on your, um, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, on your mirror. And then it's got this hole right here in the top of the bracket. You would put this end of this antenna cable through there and then you can put your antennas directly on that. Makes it to where you don't have to have the antenna sitting off the roof like I've got currently. Like I said, I'm gonna have to tidy mine up. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it exactly yet, but something will be done before we go and drive around. They're all installed. Super easy to install, by the way. Um, got done before lunch. The only issue was that I can't uh, can't leave my antenna on top. At least not while I'm coming through this door. But when I go through the barn door, I can. The barn door is just a hair taller, apparently, and just fits. So, just minor inconvenience for me. That's not their fault by any means. That's just kind of how it went. I'm going to get some zip ties and we'll put those on there. Installed them in the truck, obviously, too. Uh, the truck isn't a permanent install right now because I don't know where I want to put it. So I'm kind of leaving it unhooked from everything at the moment. And all I got to do is simply, you know, move it to wherever it's comfortable for me at the moment. And then I can use it. We are going to do a range test sometime today. The rain has stopped, but it is still rainy. So we're just kind of waiting for it to clear up for real and then we'll go out there. I don't want to do the test during a thunderstorm because it's not really fair to the product to ensure that it's getting a fair test. We're going to do it during normal weather because honestly, in our operation, the only thing we'd be doing during rain, um, you know, or rough weather is moving animals and the handhelds. We actually tested those earlier. I ran to Jason's real quick and, uh, they reach right now with rainy and thunderstormy weather they actually reached about a mile and a half and our ground isn't flat and we've got a lot of trees so i thought that was pretty good what i'm going to do for now to kill time is uh we'll go ahead and start welding this up i know those of you who remember that we did put skid steer uh quick connects on here and we have went away from that and i'll show you why one of these is this one. Should be straight up and down, and they bent. So I don't know if it's just going to be because that tractor is able to lift so much. I don't know if it's just not. Um, that's what I'm looking for here. I don't know if because the tractor's lifting ability is m probably more than what those glad hands are rated for, it's not going to do it. I'm not sure. But that and the fact that the tractor moves faster and the loader will bounce harder because we're moving faster. So I don't know. So we're going to do a short range test real quick just to see, you know, if everything Midland says is accurate. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it on here, but so if you look out in the distance, so we have rolling hills, right? And some of them are real steep and tall. As you can see, we're not at the highest point. A little farther out here, it's probably about a hundred and, I don't know, maybe a hundred, 150 feet taller than us. So it's not like we have a height advantage as far as where we're gonna do this from. Gage is in my truck and he's gonna be manning that radio. And how we're gonna do this is as I go farther away from our farm, just keep trying to talk to him. Gage, can you hear me? Yeah. The radio is pretty loud, I actually don't have it turned up all the way. Probably. I'm uh, about three quarters of the way up. I'm kind of hard of hearing though, so I'm probably not the best judge as far as, you know, how loud it really is. I'm passing while I'm can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Let me know if it starts to get distorted as well. Yeah, I'm distorted. Uh, it'll be real staticky and kind of hard to understand me. Pass the Pams. Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know how well you'll see it, but right now we're probably uh, if I 
were to guess, I'd say we're somewhere around 30 feet lower than the house. And I'm gonna wait until I get up here behind these trees. Since we're not in line of sight anymore, this hill is completely blocking my view of even the top of our shop or our barns or our house or anything. And I'm gonna be farther down because we're still going downhill and we'll be behind trees. And we'll see how that does. And granted, this is only about uh, probably three quarters of a mile. We're not real far. But I didn't say nothing, I just hit the button. Alright, now I'm talking and I'm by Miss Casper's. Dad, can you hear you? Is it still clear? Yeah. Alright, and that's where the metal shop behind or between us, metal building, that hill, everything. I mean, it's not ideal conditions. So it's off to a good start. I really didn't think it reached all that far. Gage, can you hear me? I'm passing Lance's driveway. Can you still hear me clearly? Yeah. All right, so handhelds are, I mean, we're now. Okay, thanks buddy. So now we're, oh, line of sight wise, we're two miles from our house to Jason's. So right here, we're probably a mile and a quarter or so. I actually have to get on a map and look. And when we do the real range test, the far one, I will get a map out and it'll show where we're at. And it'll show, you know, how far we are from the farm basically to give you a reference. And I'll actually do it in straight line mileage, not guesstimates. Not yet, I'm almost at Jason's. back uphill a little bit so we're probably close to the same height as we were at the house so basically now what we're fighting is all the vegetation and everything between us and the house can you still hear me Gage?
How about now? I'm pulling into his driveway. Can I still hear you? Is it clearer now? Yeah. Alright, I'm at Jason's. Can you still hear me? What? I'm at Jason's. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it clear? Yeah. Good deal. Alright, buddy. Thank you. Leave my door open so you don't smash my radio. Alright, so that's the short range test. We'll do a long range one. Like I said, I'll have to get a map up and we'll we'll actually go and see how far out it'll reach. And we'll switch antennas and I'll actually make sure the antenna's on the top instead of on the side. Because when I'm coming this way, the radio, the antenna is actually on the opposite side of what I'm, so it's kind of transmit through the tractor. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you tune in to see the range test because I'm super excited to see it. I'm just, I'm mesmerized that they'll reach this far through this rain that we're in. Um, I'm sure you've seen Brian Brown's farming videos. I'm sure you've seen his where he's reaching really far. I think they got like 20, 30 miles away. Well, his ground's quite a bit flatter than ours with a lot less trees. So, I'm very curious to see how it works. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time. Have a blessed week.